Hey there, my name is Dr. Cork and today I will tell you about top 10 of my favorite cocktails and then make some of them. This list is not set in stone and if you asked me about my favorite cocktails a couple years ago, the answer would be different. Time passes, seasons change each other, some cocktails are forgotten, others get boring, others appear in my life. Of course, I try to select the ones that have passed some kind of test of time, but still, I suggest to treat this list as a snapshot of my tastes at the moment, and I don't guarantee that it won't change in a month. Also, most of these cocktails I have already made on this channel or on my Instagram, by the way, subscribe if you haven't already. All the links will be in the description to this video. My job is basically drinking on camera. I'm not complaining at all, <laughs> but in normal life I rarely feel the urge to mess around with a shaker, a strainer and all this stuff. And the drink of my choice is usually dry white wine, French cider, also dry, or less often uh, Prosecco or some other extra brute sparkling wine. Once in a while I can drink some light beer if it's hot outside, but hand on heart, most likely it will be lemonade. I like interesting craft sodas with unusual flavor combinations and not too sweet. Not like Coca-Cola or Fanta or something like that. Hmm, maybe I should make a video about it. I also love to mix apple juice with soda and make Apfelschorle. It's equally simple to make and great tasting. So in cocktails I am more inclined to something light, pleasant, perhaps carbonated, with low ABV. Although, of course, there are exceptions. And I would like to start my list with exactly this type of cocktail. The highball. The first highball was scotch and soda. I mean, literally, scotch whiskey was diluted with soda water, and that's where it all started. Nowadays, a highball is any long drink with a base of strong alcohol, rum, tequila, gin, whiskey, diluted with a soft drink, often carbonated. A syrup or a sweet liqueur can be added, and some kind of sour mixer like lemon or lime juice. So you can make it your own, and I love it. Interesting fact. In Japan, highboru still means only whiskey and soda, and not anything else. If you are from Japan, hit like. Domo arigato. Number 9. Stone Sour. The recipe for a cocktail with that name was printed as early as 1917. You weren't born yet, and I was just a little boy and hadn't had any drink yet. The book was called The Ideal Bartender, written by Tom Bullock, the first black author of a cocktail book, by the way. The recipe called for aged old Tom Gin, and cocktail historian David Wondrich generally believes it was a first variation of the Gimlet cocktail. So much water has passed under the bridge since then, Tom Bullock is long dead, and today Stone Sour is basically a whiskey sour with orange juice. Sometimes it's nice to add apricot brandy liqueur for added complexity and also because apricot has a pit, stone, pit, get it? Also, Corey Taylor, best known as the frontman of Slipknot, named his band after this cocktail which fell apart after five years of existence, but was later revived. The cocktail is shaken, and to the shaker we're gonna add bourbon, one and a half ounce, 45 milliliters, apricot brandy liqueur, half an ounce, 15 milliliters, freshly squeezed lemon juice, three quarters of an ounce, 22 milliliters, freshly squeezed orange juice, half an ounce, 15 milliliters, and simple syrup, half an ounce, 15 milliliters. Fill the shaker with ice and shake it vigorously, dedicating this shake to this comment. Fill the old-fashioned glass with ice and fine strain the cocktail. Garnish with an orange peel. And this is how you make Stone Sour, one of my favorite cocktails. I like it much better with apricot brandy, it gives it uh, a complexity and also it's a pretty strong and nice citrusy cocktail. Number 8. Paloma, the national drink of Mexico. A simple, refreshing cocktail, originally it is practically a highball with tequila, lime and grapefruit soda, but the latter is not available in all the stores, at least not where I live, so I make it a little differently. By the way, I associate Paloma not with Mexico, but with Armenia, where I lived for almost a year, and Yerevan is hot in summer, so such a refreshing cocktail was just right. Although cold fresh water from Pulpulak is even better. The cocktail is easy to make, right in the highball glass. To which we're gonna add. Tequila, 2 ounces, 60 milliliters. Freshly squeezed grapefruit juice, 2 ounces, 60 milliliters. Freshly squeezed lime juice, half an ounce, 15 milliliters. And simple syrup, also half an ounce, 15 milliliters. You can add a tiny pinch of salt or you can just use a soda water, which is a little bit mineral, just a touch. Stir a little. Fill the glass with ice, leaving a little bit of space for soda water. 1 to 2 ounces, 30 to 60 milliliters. Stir a little more and garnish with a grapefruit wedge. And this is how you make 
Paloma. If I used pink grapefruit, it would be more pink, but the color doesn't matter, actually. Speaking of Armenia, number seven, Alice or Alisa. A cocktail invented by my friend, bartender Herr Gabrielian, and it is a very pleasant and unusual cocktail with a nice balance. I'm not going to make it right now, because I don't have the right ice, but I highly recommend it. So to the shaker you're gonna add gin, 50 milliliters, lychee liqueur, 20 milliliters, lemon lime juice, 20 milliliters, aloe vera juice, 70 milliliters, and simple sugar syrup, 10 milliliters. Shake the cocktail with ice and decorate the rim of the old-fashioned glass with sumac and an ice cube made from carcade tea with rose water. Cocktail is garnished with a sprig of mint and powdered sugar. The coolest thing about this cocktail is that carcade ice, which is hibiscus ice, gradually melts and adds a nice sour hibiscus taste to the cocktail. And when you finish the cocktail, you can pour something like a gin and tonic to the same glass with the remaining ice cube, and the ice will gradually give its flavor to the next cocktail too. Tasty, cool, fun, and definitely recommend it. Number six, slow gin and tonic. For some reason, gin and tonic is considered to be an inferior drink, like whiskey and coke, I think the reason for this is the popularity of bottled and canned mixes, which are sold in every store and they are certainly not of the highest class and taste. Although if you use some interesting gin, add a little bit of freshly squeezed lime juice and dilute it with high quality tonic, for example with elderflower flavor, you get a very pleasant and I'm not afraid to say this word, exquisite drink. I made a whole video about gin and tonics, you can check it out, the link is in the description to this video. There are some interesting variations, including slow gin and tonic. Slow gin is not actually gin, but rather a gin-based liqueur flavored with slow berries. In my case, it is also spicy, so it's spiced slow gin, which will add extra flavors to the cocktail, but you can use regular slow gin. The cocktail is very easy to make, just build it directly in the highball glass, to which we're gonna add slow gin, one ounce, 30 milliliters. Regular old dry gin, one and a half ounce, 45 milliliters. Freshly squeezed lemon or lime juice, third of an ounce, 10 milliliters. Stir a little, fill the glass with ice, and top up with tonic. Garnish with the remaining lime half. And this is how you make slow gin and tonic. Delicious, refreshing, and works well even if you don't have the greatest gin or the nicest tonic. Number five, fire and brimstone. I have a whole video called just that, my new favorite cocktail. Check it out, the link is in the description. And it's basically a variation on mezcal margarita, but with some interesting twists. The triple sec is infused with Earl Grey tea. Fresh chili peppers are muddled to the cocktail and the mezcal adds a smoky flavor. The result is slightly spicy, tart, sweet and sour all at the same time. I highly recommend that you try it. This cocktail is just perfect for cold weather. First, add some Earl Grey tea to triple sec to infuse. Muddle a couple slices of chili pepper. Add one and a half ounce of 45 milliliters of mezcal. Our infused triple sec, lime juice, agave syrup, and a couple dashes of orange bitters. Shake it with ice, fine strain to the cocktail glass and garnish with a lime twist. Number four, lemon pie deluxe. There is a cocktail simply called lemon pie. It is delicious, sweet and great to have at Christmas time. A couple years ago I decided to make my own twist, which is even sweeter, more delicious and a couple hundred percent more Christmassy. <laughs> Not the easiest cocktail to make, but Christmas only comes once a year, right? For this cocktail we're gonna need two shakers. Shaker number one. We're gonna need Advocat, which is egg liqueur. If you want me to make one at home, leave a comment. Two ounces, 60 milliliters. Freshly squeezed lemon juice, half an ounce, 15 milliliters. Vanilla syrup, third of an ounce, 10 milliliters. Shaker number two, lemon juice, five milliliters. Simple syrup, five milliliters, one dash. Limoncello, half an ounce, 15 milliliters. One egg white or some vegan alternative. And a strainer spring. Fill the first shaker with ice and shake it vigorously, dedicating this shake to this comment. Strain to the cocktail glass and layer the contents of the second shaker on top. Grate a little bit of cinnamon on top. And this is how you make lemon pie deluxe. Of course, if you drink these cocktails every day, you'll turn into human sugar cube, but why not indulge yourself on holidays? Cheers. Number three, Dr. Americano. 
Once again, my twist on an existing Americano cocktail, but I think it turned out to be much better. To me, the original Americano is ruined by the Campari because it's too bright and overshadows everything else. I've made my version on this channel before, you can check it out, but uh, the basic principle is that, like the original, I have a sweet part and bitter part, and also soda. But my sweet part consists of two ingredients, white sweet vermouth, preferably aged, and sweet cream sherry, a blend of Pedro Jimenez and Palomino. And the bitter part also consists of two ingredients, Chinar Artichoke Bitter Liqueur and Luxardo Bitter Liqueur. In my humble opinion, the result has a much more complex and balanced flavor than the original and everyone who has ever tried it agrees with me. Number 2. Apple Crush. Also a cocktail of my own creation that I made recently for Halloween, check it out. I love hard cider and wanted to make something with apple taste. For some reason, apple cocktails are pretty scarce. Gotta fix that, I thought. That's how I created Apple Crush. It's one ounce Calvados or Applejack, 30 milliliters, one ounce or 30 milliliters of Aperol or other aperitivo, half an ounce or 15 milliliters of homemade apple syrup, which is basically evaporated apple juice with sugar, half an ounce, 15 milliliters of pumpkin spice syrup or a large pinch of pumpkin spice, shake it vigorously and top up with three ounces or 90 milliliters of dry hard cider. Garnish with a cinnamon stick and you have a great cocktail, festive and very flavorful. Check out the full recipe in my Halloween video. Before I get to the first place, here are some honorable mentions. Long Island iced tea. Don't remember the last time I've drunk it, but it's always in my heart. White Cuban, which is a variation on the White Russian, but with uh, rum instead of vodka, which adds an extra dimension of flavor. Just like Long Island, I can't remember when I drank it, but the warm memories haven't weathered yet. The Negroni. There was a video recently with different versions, you can check it out. Uh, you can tailor the ingredients to your taste, like smoked mezcal negroni is one of my favorites. Naked Lady, a pretty rare cocktail with white rum, sweet vermouth, apricot brandy, lemon juice and grenadine. It's strong and sweet and maybe I should make it someday. And last but not least, Porn Star Martini. Vanilla vodka, lime juice, passion fruit liqueur, passion fruit puree, vanilla syrup and sparkling wine in a separate glass. There's also a variation I like called Porn Star Highball, which is all of these ingredients in the same glass, like a highball cocktail. And my favorite cocktail right now is Easy Mix Drink, also known as just Mix Drink. Like I said, making cocktails is my job, so on a day-to-day -day basis I get lazy and do what's easier. Plus, there are a million options like Duck and Stormy, Duck Rum, Ginger Beer, Lime, Presbyterian, which is Scotch or Bourbon with soda and ginger ale, Cape Codder, Vodka Cranberry Juice, Cuba Libre, Rum and Coke and Lime Juice, Gin and Tonic, you know what it is, Lily and Tonic, uh, generally a lot of things go well with Tonic, for example Jamison Coffee Whiskey, also Snowball, which is Sprite or 7 Up with Advocate Liqueur, and a little bit of lime juice. All of these are examples of easy mix drinks. That is a low ABV cocktail that is made by mixing two ingredients. Some may say that these are also highballs, just like on the 10th place of this list, and they will be right. But for me personally, a highball is still a narrower category, which I have already described at the beginning of this video. On the other hand, I love them so much that I'll let them be on this list twice. After all, it's my list, I can do whatever I want. And that's my list. If you agree with me or disagree, you can uh, type something in the comments and I'll read it and maybe even answer your comment. Thanks for watching, subscribe to my YouTube, Instagram and all the other social media. The links are in the description to this video, as are links to my Patreon and YouTube membership. As always, all the recipes in text form are on my website, dr-kork.com. The link is also in the description to this video. Drink responsibly and as always, do svidos.